Good afternoon. Today I would like to introduce you the next pharmacology lecture, Drugs Acting on Respiratory System. Drugs acting on respiratory system are classified as analeptics, which act on respiratory center through autonomic nervous system, antitussive drugs for the treatment of cough, agents acting on bronchial drainage function, expectorants, bronchiolytics, anti-asthmatic drugs, drugs preventing or and treating lung edema, acute pathology of lung tissue, antibacterial for infection if detected, and oncologic, antitumoral if detected. Today we will discuss most of these groups. Let's start from definitions. Cough is a protective reflex occurred due to stimulation of mechano and or hemoreceptors of throat, respiratory passages or stretch receptors in the lung. Cough may be useful or useless. Useless or non-productive should be suppressed. Useful or productive one serves to drain the airway, its suppression is not desirable, may even be harmful, so should be stimulated. Apart from specific remedies, cough may be treated as a symptom by non-specific therapy, acting on concomitant pathologic processes. But cough is not the only symptom occurred during lung and respiratory tract pathology. Ventilation disorders are signals for searching of reasons. Bronchial asthma. Bronchial asthma is characterized by hyperresponsiveness of tracheobronchial smooth muscle to a variety of stimuli, resulting in narrowing of air tubes, often accompanied by increased secretion, mucosal edema, and mucus plugging. Symptoms include dyspnea, wheezing, cough, and maybe limitation of activity. Asthma is now recognized to be a primarily inflammatory condition, inflammation underlying hyperreactivity. An allergic basis can be demonstrated in many adult and higher percentage of pediatric patients. In others, a variety of trigger factors – infection, irritants, pollution, exercise, exposure to cold air, psychogenic – may be involved. In here we talk about extrinsic asthma. It's mostly episodic, less prone to status asthmaticus, and intrinsic asthma. It tends to be perennial, status asthmaticus is more common. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, an inflammatory disease characterized by progressive bronchiolar fibrosis and alveolar destruction, emphysema, which can occur in variable proportions. The expiratory airflow limitation doesn't fluctuate markedly over long periods of time, but there are exacerbations precipitated and provoked by respiratory infections and or pollutants. Loss of bronchiolar elasticity leads to closure of smaller air tubes during expiration. The airway obstruction is accentuated during exercise, causing shortness of breath. The first pharmacological group for today is analeptics. Analeptics are general CNS stimulants. They stimulate vitally important centers, respiratory and vasomotor of the brain. Classification of analeptics under the influence on the different part of CNS. First, analeptics act mainly on the cortex of the brain, caffeine. Second, analeptics act mainly on the subcortex centers, Bemigrit, etimizol, cetitone, lobelin, cordiamine, camphor, sulfocamphocaine. And third, analeptics act mainly on the spinal cord, strychnine. Classification of analeptics by the mechanism of action. First, direct acting stimulate the centers of medulla oblongata. Bemigrit, etimizol, caffeine. Second, reflexive acting cause reflexive stimulation of the respiratory center due to encholinary receptors of the sinus caroticus stimulation, cetitone and lobulin. And third, mixed action analeptics act as directly on the respiratory and vasomotor centers as reflexive on the hemoreceptors of vessels, cordiamine, camphor, sulfocamphocaine. Direct analeptics. Bemigrid, solution 0.5%, 5 ml, in isotonic solution of sodium chloride. 
acting on respiratory center of medulla oblongata. Etimizol, ampules 1 to 1.5 percent, 5 milliliters, acting on medulla oblongata. Caffeine, tablets 0 0.1, ampules 10 percent, 1 milliliter, acting on cerebral cortex, providing general analeptic effect. Strychnine nitrate, ampules 0 0.1 percent, 1 milliliter acting on medulla spinalis by stimulating transmission of reflector impulses. Indirect or reflexive analeptics. Lobulin hydrochloride, N-cholinomimetic, N-cholinergic agent, ampules 1%, 1 ml. Cytosine or cytotone, ampules 0.15%, 1 ml, also N-cholinergic, acting in sinocarotid region, activate medulla oblongata, Finally, provide an epileptic effect. Solution of ammonium hydroxide. Integrative act on peripheric nerve receptors with final functional activation of respiratory organs function, like reaction of defense. And mixed action analeptics. Oil solution of camphor, 20% 1 2 ml. Solution of sulfocamphocaine, 10% 2 ml. Cordiamine. Solution 25%, bisatilamide of nicotinic acid, and carbogen, which is 93 to 95% of oxygen and 5 to 7% of carbon dioxide. Indications for use of analeptics: hypoxia, respiratory failure, overdosing or poisoning with narcotic drugs, general anesthetics, alcohol, hypnotic drugs. In simple, those drugs which depress central nervous system. To speed up awakening action after narcosis, asphyxia of newborns, shocks, collapses, and prophylaxis of lung atelectasis and pneumonia. Side effects. Nausea vomiting, seizures, increasing of reflex excitation, hyperventilation, cardiac arrhythmia. The next part of our lecture is those drugs which are used for productive and non-productive cough. These are pharyngeal demulcents, soothe the throat and reduce afferent impulses from the inflamed, irritated pharyngeal mucosa, thus provide symptomatic relief in dry cough arising from the throat. Next, antitussives are drugs that act in the CNS to raise the threshold of cough center or act peripherally in the respiratory tract to reduce tussle impulses or both these actions. Because they aim to control rather than eliminate cough, antitussives should be used only for dry, non-productive cough or if cough is undoubtedly tiring, disturbs sleep or is hazardous. Hernia, piles, cardiac disease, ocular surgery. Next, expectorants or mucokinetics are drugs believed to increase bronchial secretion or reduce its viscosity, facilitating its removal by coughing. Guafenazine, Vasaka, Tolu Balsam are plant products which are supposed to enhance bronchial secretion and mucociliary function while being secreted by tracheobronchial glands. Ammonium salts are nauseating, reflexively increase respiratory secretions. And mucolytics are capable of inducing thin copious bronchial secretion. They depolymerize mucopolysaccharides directly as well as by liberating lysosomal enzymes. Network of fibers in tenacious sputum is broken. They are particularly useful if mucous plugs are present. First, pharyngeal demulcents. Examples. Lozenges, cough drops, linctuses containing syrup, glycerin, licoris. Next, antitusive cough center suppressants. They are subdivided to opioids, codeine, ethylmorphine, non-opioids, noscapine, dextrometrophan, clofedanol, glaucine, antihistamine, chlorpheniramine, diphenhydramine, prometazine, and peripherally acting, prenoxdiazine. Opioid antitussives. These are codeine, tablets 0.015, obtained from opium poppy, papaver somniferum, ethylmorphine hydrochloride, tablets powder 0.01 to 0.015, and in some cases morphine hydrochloride, solution 1%, 1 ml. 
non-opioid antitussive remedies, noscapine or narcotine, an opium alkaloid of benzoisoquinolone. It depresses cough but has no narcotic, analgesic or dependence-inducing properties. Dose 0.015 to 0.03. Dextrometorphan, synthetic, central N-methyl D-aspartate receptor antagonist. D-isomer has antitussive action while L-isomer is analgesic. Doesn't depress mucociliary function. The antitussive action has been rated equivalent to codeine. Dose 0.01 to 0.02. Clofedanol, centrally acting antitussive with slow onset and longer duration. Dose 0.02 to 0.04. Glaucine, alkaloid from the plant Glaucinum flavum of the poppy family. Like codeine, glaucine suppresses cough center but doesn't depress respiration. Not addictive, no drug dependence, doesn't reduce intestinal motility. Dose 0.04 to 0.08. Peripherally acting antitussives. Prenoxdiazine. Cough reflexogenic zone blocker. Trade names Libexine, Prenoxid. It acts peripherally by desensitizing the pulmonary stretch receptors. Therefore, there is a reduction of cough impulses originating in the lungs. Prenoxdiazine is indicated in cough of bronchial origin. Dose 0.1 to 0.2. Other antitussive remedies. Oxaladine citrate, tablets 0.01, syrup 1 ml 0.01, trade names 2-suprex, paxaladine, butamirate citrate, dregi 0.005, stoptusin, sinicode, intusin, atusin, dextrometorphan 0.015 plus ascorbic acid, and acetal amino nitro propoxy benzene, dregi 0.025, falimint. Adjuvant to antitussive drugs, indirect action. Bronchodilators, acting through adrenergic receptors, as an example salbutamol terbutalin. Bronchodilators, acting through cholinergic receptors, ipratropium bromide, oxytropium bromide, teotropium bromide, and methylxanthines. Theophylline, theobromine. The next expectorants or mucokinetics. They are divided into bronchial secretion enhancers and mucolytics. Bronchial secretion enhancers are sodium potassium citrate, sodium potassium hydrocarbonate, potassium iodide, guaifenesine, balsam of tolu, vasaka, ammonium chloride. And mucolytics, bromhexine, ambroxol, acetylcysteine, and carboxysteine. Bronchial secretion enhancers in more details. First, remedies acting on salt stratum of sputum, local rehydrating and secretolytic as inhalation. Iso and hypertonic solution of sodium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, sodium benzoate, ammonia chloride. Second, Bronchial gland stimulants, direct acting, potassium iodide, sodium iodide. Third, gastropulmonal mucokinetics, vagus reflex activators. Fourth, emetines. Fifth, saponins. Sixth, etheric oils. Seventh, detergents. And eighth, combined pharmacological expectorant remedies. And here you can see examples of local bronchiolytics, rehydrates, sodium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, sodium benzoate, ammonium chloride. In here, bronchial mucosal glands direct stimulants. In here, gastropulmonal mucokinetic nervous vagus reflex activators, which acting through stomach mucus lead to bronchial secretion increasing, increases ciliary apparatus activity of bronchial epithelium, and also acting on autonomic nerve ganglia, chromaffin cells of suprarenal glands, and on sinocarotid reflectoric zone, emetics, vomiting inducing indirect acting agents. Indirect acting on respiratory tract saponin containing plants, etheric oils, and detergents, which decrease surface tension of bronchial secret. 
The next group of expectorants is mucolytics. Mucolytics are subdivided to mucoactive remedies acting on synthesis of sputum secretion, mucoactive remedies acting on polymeric bonds of sputum, detergents, surface tension decreasing agents, decrease adhesive properties of sputum, bronchial mucosal glands blocking agents, and surfactant acting and related drugs. Mucolytics direct acting on bronchial secret. Solving bronchial secret if increased adhesion. Proteolytic enzymes, trypsin, hemotrypsin, ribonuclease, desoxyribonuclease. Drugs acting like hydrants of bronchial secret, mucohydrates. Inorganic compounds of iodine, potassium and sodium, hypertonic salt solutions of sodium chloride. Drugs acting on bronchial secretion activity, surfactant synthesis stimulators, bromhexine, tablets 0.004 to 0.008, syrup 4 mg 5 ml, solution for internal use 4 mg in 5 ml, and ambroxol, syrup 0.015 in 5 ml, solution 0.3%, tablets 0.015 to 0.03, Capsules 0.075, retard, ampules 0.015 in 2 ml, solution 0.75%. Ambroxol is a metabolite of bromhexine. The next surfactant substitutes. Alveofact, purified surfactant suspension for intratracheal installation. Exosurf, distress syndrome at newly born child. And Sucrim. Also distress syndrome at newly born child. Next, cysteine derivates. With ammonia blocked group, prevents peptide bond condensation, which form mucoproteins and mucopolycarbohydrates. The drugs acetylcysteine, trade names ACC and mucosolvine, tablets, powders 0.2 to 0.4, 0.6. Ampules 10-20%, 2 to 10 ml. And carbocysteine, tablets 0.2. Synthetic mucolytics, stepronin, mesna, tumor captoethane sulfonate sodium, mistabron, and letostein. The next part of our lecture is drugs used in bronchial asthma. Drugs for bronchial asthma. Approaches to the treatment. Prevention of antigen-antibody reaction, if antigen can be identified. Neutralization of immunoglobulin E, reagenic antibody. Suppression of inflammation and bronchial hyperreactivity. Prevention of release of mediators, mast cell stabilizers. Antagonism of released mediators, leukotriene antagonists, antihistamines, platelet-activating factor antagonists. Blockade of constrictor neurotransmitter, anticholinergics, mimicking dilator neurotransmitter, sympathomimetics, and directly acting bronchodilators. First group is adrenomimetics, which are subdivided into alpha and beta adrenomimetics, adrenaline hydrochloride solution 0.1% 1 ml, Indirect acting adrenomimetics, ephedrine hydrochloride solution 5% 1 ml and tablets 0.05, and beta-1 plus beta-2 adrenomimetics, isadrine or isoprenaline, tablets 0.001, ampules 1% 25 ml, and orciprenaline sulfate, alupent, aspopent. But more preferable are selective beta-2 agonists, which are classical bronchodilators. These are salbutamol, terbutaline, bambuterol, salmeterol, and formoterol. Bronchodilators, which are beta-2 adrenomimetics, beta-2 agonists, are subdivided into short-acting, in brackets you can see duration of action in hours, phenoterol, salbutamol, terbutaline, and levosalbutamol, and long-acting formoterol, r-formoterol, indacaterol, and salmeterol. The next group of bronchodilators is methylxanthines. We met with them in lecture 8. These are teophylline, teobromine, 
caffeine, aminophylline, choline theophylline, hydroxyethyl theophylline, theophylline ethanolate of piperazine, and doxophylline. And in here we can see comparative pharmacological actions of caffeine and theophylline. The amount of pluses represents the force of caffeine or theophylline to provide an action. As an example, CNS stimulation, low dose, caffeine 3 pluses, theophylline 2 pluses, toxicity, caffeine 2, theophylline 3. Heart stimulation, caffeine 2, theophylline 3. Blood vessel relaxation, caffeine 1, theophylline 2. Bronchi dilatation, caffeine 1, theophylline 3. Kidney diuresis, caffeine 1, theophylline 2. Skeletal muscle increased contractility, caffeine 3, theophylline 2. Gastric mucosa irritation, caffeine 1, theophylline 2. Phosphodiesterase inhibition, caffeine 2, theophylline 3. And adenosine antagonism, caffeine 2, theophylline 3. Please note, theobromine is of no therapeutic importance. And in here you can see the content of these alkaloids in beverages in an average cup. In tea, caffeine 0.05, theophylline 0.001. In coffee, caffeine 0.075. In cocoa or chocolate, theobromine 0.2, caffeine 0.004. And in 200 milliliters bottle of cola drink, caffeine 0.03. And I would like to stop in more details on one of the drugs from the group of methylxanthines, which is eophylline. Solution 2.4%. Eophylline is a mixture of theophylline and 1,2-ethylendiamine. It has a bronchodilating effect, apparently due to a direct relaxing effect on the smooth muscles of the respiratory tract and blood vessels of the lungs. It is believed that this action is caused by selective suppression of the activity of specific phosphodiesterase, which leads to an increase in the intracellular concentration of CMP. The results of experimental in vitro studies show that the main role, apparently, is played by isoenzymes of types 3 and 4. Suppression of the activity of these isoenzymes can also cause some side effects of aminophylline, theophylline, including vomiting, arterial hypotension, and tachycardia. It blocks adenosine purine receptors, which may be one of the factors affecting the bronchi. The next pharmacological group, which is also bronchodilators, is anticholinergics. In here you can see non-selective ones which are atropine sulfate, platyphylene hydrotartrate, and methocinium iodide, but more important are selective anticholinergics, which are subdivided into short-acting, iprotropium bromide, 6-8 hours duration, trade name Atrovent, aerosol 15 mL, one dose is 0.0002, next oxytropium bromide, the duration of which is also 6-8 hours, and long-acting theotropium bromide, more than 24 hours duration. And in here you can see combined bronchodilators, which include combination of beta-2 agonist and selective anticholinergic. For example, phenoterol plus iprotropium bromide, inhalator and nebulizer, and salbutamol plus iprotropium bromide, inhalator and nebulizer. The next pharmacological group which can be used in the treatment of bronchial asthma is corticosteroids. They are subdivided into systemic and inhalational. Systemic are hydrocortisone and prednisolone. Inhalational, baclometazone dipropionate, budesonide, fluticasone propionate, flunisolide, and ciclesonide. There also exist combinations of corticosteroids and beta-2 agonists with long-lasting effect. For example, formoterol plus budesonide inhalator or salmeterol plus fluticasone propionate inhalator. 
The next group used in treatment of bronchial asthma is antihistamines. Pathophysiological roles of histamine. Gastric secretion, allergic phenomena, S transmitter, inflammation, tissue growth and repair, headache. And here you can see distinctive features of three types of histaminergic receptors. H1, H2, H3, selective agonists, selective antagonists, receptor type, effector pathway, and distribution in body, actions mediated. And in here you can see comparative characteristics of some main antihistamines of different generations. For example, highly sedative, diphenhydramine, demonhydrinate, prometazine, hydroxyzine, moderately sedative, phenyramine, cyproheptadine, meclozine or meclizine, cinerizine, mild sedative, chlorphenyramine, dexchlorphenyramine, triprolidine, clemastine, and second generation antihistaminics, fexofenadine, loratadine, desloratadine, cetirizine, levocetirizine, azelastine, mesolastine, ebastine, rupatadine. Terfenadine and astemizole are the earliest second generation H1 antihistamines that are now banned. Cyclizine, buclizine, dimetindine, mebhydroline are conventional antihistamines that have become unavailable. The next group is mast cell stabilizers. In here we have sodium chromoglycate or chromoline sodium and ketotifen. Mast cell stabilizers inhibit degranulation of mast cells as well as other inflammatory cells by trigger stimuli. Release of mediators of asthma is restricted. Bronchospasm induced by allergens, irritants, cold air and exercise may be attenuated. They are not bronchodilators and do not antagonize constrictor action of histamine, acetylcholine, leukotriens, etc. Therefore, they are ineffective if given during an asthmatic attack. The next leukotriene antagonists. Since it was realized that cysteinyl leukotrienes LTC4D4 are important mediators of bronchial asthma, efforts were made to develop their antagonists and synthesis inhibitors. Two cis-LT1 receptor antagonists, Montelukast and Zafirlukast, are available. Both have similar actions and clinical utility. They competitively antagonize cis-LT1 receptor-mediated bronchoconstriction, airway mucus secretion, increased vascular permeability and recruitment of eosinophils. Bronchodilation, reduced putum eosinophil count, suppression of bronchial inflammation, mucus and hyperreactivity are noted in asthma patients. Parameters of lung function show variable improvement. Some studies have found that certain patients are responders while others are non-responders to anti-LT therapy. This may reflect differing extent of involvement of LTs as asthma mediators. And one more group is anti-immunoglobulin E antibody. Omalizumab, it is a humanized monoclonal antibody against immunoglobulin E. Administered subcutaneously, it neutralizes free immunoglobulin E in circulation without activating mast cells and other inflammatory cells. On antigen challenge, little immunoglobulin E is available bound to the mast cell surface receptors to trigger mediator release and cause bronchoconstriction. In severe extrinsic asthma, omalizumab has been found to reduce exacerbations and steroid requirement. No benefit has been noted in non-allergic asthma. It is very expensive. Use is reserved for resistant asthma patients with positive skin tests or raised immunoglobulin E levels who require frequent hospitalization. It is being tried in other allergic diseases as well. And now I would like to stop on choice of treatment of bronchial asthma. First, mild episodic asthma. Symptoms less than once daily, normal in between attacks. 
inhalation of short acting beta 2 agonist seasonal asthma low dose inhalation of steroids 200 to 400 micrograms day chromoglycate 3 4 weeks before anticipated seasonal attacks third mild chronic persistent asthma with occasional exacerbations symptoms once daily subnormal ventilatory performance regular low dose inhalation of steroids from 100 to 500 micrograms day fourth moderate asthma with frequent exacerbation attack more than once daily inhalation of steroids up to 800 micrograms day plus long acting beta 2 agonist fifth severe asthma continuous symptoms activity limitation frequent exacerbation inhalation of steroids up to 800 to 2000 micrograms day plus long acting beta 2 agonist twice daily six status asthmaticus refractory asthma hydrocortisone hemisucinate 100 mg nebulized salbutamol 2.5 to 5 mg ipratropium bromide 0.5 mg high flow humidified inhalation of oxygen salbutamol terbutaline 0.4 mg intramuscular or subcutaneous intubation and mechanical ventilation correct dehydration sodium bicarbonate infusion in some cases of respiratory tract diseases antimicrobial drugs they will be discussed and observed separately in lecture 15 and the last part of our lecture is examples of mcqs a 40 year old patient has been suffering from bronchial asthma accompanied with cardiac arrhythmia tachycardia for 10 years indicate adrenomimetic which should be administered for treatment taking into account a campaign disease and here you must choose a selective beta 2 agonist which will act only on adrenergic receptors located in bronchis so the answer is salbutamol a child was born with asphyxia what agent is necessary to introduce for stimulation of breath in here you must find the analeptic and from all the options we have got only one analeptic which is etimizole. Indicate an expectorant agent that is an inorganic substance and is usually used orally as a solution, rarely as an inhalation and exerts direct irritating action on bronchial glands. We discussed this today and the answer is potassium iodide. Patient with bronchial asthma was taking tablets which caused insomnia, headache, increased blood pressure. What medicine can cause such complications? In this case, we must talk about adrenomimetics of indirect action. From all the options, the only one which is ephedrine is an adrenomimetic of indirect action. A patient with bronchial asthma was treated with the combined drug in tablets that caused insomnia, irritability, headache, and rise of arterial pressure. What agent could cause these side effects? Again, the same situation, adrenomimetic of indirect action, which is ephedrine. A female patient suffering from acute bronchitis complains about respiratory obstruction and cough with thick, viscous sputum. She was prescribed a mucolytic agent that stimulates surfactant synthesis. What mucolytic agent was prescribed? In here we simply must find a drug which is stimulating surfactant synthesis. In here is the only one which is Ambroxol. A patient with chronic bronchitis has been administered an expectorant that disintegrates disulfined bonds of sputum glycosaminoglycan, thus reducing its viscosity. The patient has been also warned about possible bronchospasm. What drug has been administered? With this mechanism of action, only one agent is in here, which is acetylcysteine. Thank you for the attention.